In this video, I'll help you decode another portion of the neuro exam. This time we're focusing on balance and coordination. If you'd like to understand how we test your balance and coordination, don't turn away, because that starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits. And it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today's topic is part of an ongoing series helping you decode or demystify the neuro exam. Today's focus is on coordination and balance. Coordination involves many different systems. The one that I'll be focusing on in this video is the cerebellum and its connections. The cerebellum, or the little brain, is found in the back of the brain, in the back of the skull. And it has two hemispheres, so two sides, a left and a right. And it also has a center area, which is called the vermis. And the cerebellum is responsible for coordinated movements. When you move your arm, think of it as a, a missile that's being guided. And as you move, you can redirect your arm so that you hit your target. That coordination is accomplished by the cerebellum. Similarly, when you're trying to look across a field and something's moving quickly, and you have to move your eyes across and track it, the cerebellum helps you do that. And lastly, when you're trying to walk and there's a gust of wind, the cerebellum helps keep your body balanced so that you don't fall over. Studying cerebellar function is important in MS, as MS attacks and MS progression both can worsen cerebellar function. When we do the neuro exam, we break cerebellar testing up into midline structures, so the, the eyes, the voice, and the core, the, the trunk of the body, and appendicular structures, meaning arms and legs. So let's jump in. My amazing MA Amber was kind enough to allow us to video while I did a screening neuro exam on her. In these next two segments, I'll be studying eye movements. There's in fact several different kinds of eye movements that are controlled or uh, managed by the cerebellum. What you see me testing here are smooth eye movements. And we're, we're looking at the way the eyes are capable of sticking onto the target. If we notice that the eyes either lag behind or move too quickly, it teaches us about damage to the midline cerebellar structures. Here I'm testing saccadic eye movements, the ability of the eye to jump onto a target and jump onto another target. This again is testing midline cerebellar structures. In this segment I'm reciting my ABCs. Sounds foolish, but pay attention to the cadence. A, B, C, D, the rhythm or the cadence by which one speaks is controlled by the cerebellum. And an important portion of the exam is to listen to the person speak so that you determine whether or not there's a problem with cerebellar function. Another very excellent way of testing midline cerebellar structures is by walking. And so here we can see how you do with standing and whether you have balance when you do so we can look at the Romberg test. Now, Romberg testing I explained in some detail in, our, in my last video in this series. And so I'll make sure that there's a link up above uh, so that you can check that out if you haven't already. Casual gait involves a tremendous amount of balance. And so again, watching someone walk is extremely valuable in trying to understand their neurological functioning. I probably learn more of watching someone walk than almost any other portion of the neuro exam. We can take that gait exam and we can amp it up a notch. For example, tandem walking. Tandem walking requires more balance than casual walking, and so doing so can help us better understand if the person has a cerebellar problem. Turning our attention to the coordination of the arms and legs, here you see a finger-nose-finger -finger test. Again, think of that finger as sort of a, a dart that you're trying to throw and hit at a target. The vision using the cerebellum helps guide that into place, as you see Amber doing here. Tapping is also a way of testing the appendicular structures, the arms and legs. And so there you have it, folks. Decoding or hopefully demystifying yet another portion of the neuro exam. This time, coordination testing and balance testing, largely controlled by the cerebellum. I hope that you enjoyed this video and this series. And I would love to hear your comments and questions. So please consider leaving those down in the section below. I look forward to reading them. If you enjoyed this video and you think you'd like to see more from me, please consider subscribing to the channel. And until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying thank you for learning about MS with me and take care.